And uh, as most of you know, over the last few months, we have been busy working on a new XP and Quantum Studio updates. And uh, actually, yesterday we released the uh, second beta of XP 7, 8 and Quantum Studio 4. Up next is Thomas with exciting update about what cool um, features and long uh, anticipated improvements are coming in these new releases. Here we go, Thomas. Start off with XP 7, 8. Uh, Saying welcome validate archive here. It's kind of the highlight, but um, let's um, let's dive into it. So, of course, the big feature is this new background image here, uh, which I hope you'll like for the, the whole this winter season. Um, but maybe more interestingly, um, there's something called a welcome page now. So, as a developer, when you when you start the um, the SDK, you've always been sort of directed to the admin. The moment you visit uh, port 8080, what's happening now is you you'll get this welcome page, which basically <clears throat> we've, we've seen that this has been missing to help people know about the endpoints and what's available from that installation. So you immediately see that okay, I have the admin console, management API, statistics API, and then we list all the sites, and you can immediately see if they're published or not. You can see their name and their project. And we also list the web apps. Um, so here you see, see the URL for the web app, right? So the same if you click the draft here, you'll go directly to that um, endpoint. So that's going to help uh, developers to more easily see what's inside the, the box now and what the endpoints are. So it's going to be easier to use vhosts and, and setting up things for production. Um, moving on, there's another nice feature now called custom content validators. So basically, we've had a customer that that were uploading uh, zip files that would have to be validated. They had to check for some very specific uh, information inside the zip files uh, to prevent editors from making mistakes, basically, and uploading invalid uh, files. So we we saw that this was a general purpose problem and that. It could be so, uh, implemented to solve even more, let's say, general purpose validation. So the validators enable you now to do a validation of, uh, like a we call it synchronous validation when you change content. So that could be if you upload an attachment, if you, uh, if you have a, some special field validation that needs to be done, or some more complex things like, okay, we want to check this and this and this all works together. This is also integrated with Content Studio, so users will get uh, feedback based on, on what's happening uh, with the validation. So you can, of course, create your own validators. You can bundle it inside your app, or you can actually make a third-party app, install it, and it will hook into the validation process. Uh, so it's, it's um, basically every content that is updated or saved will pass through the validator, so it should be decently fast when you implement it. Also, this is very low level feature and you have to implement it with Java. But uh, now it's available. Um, this is what it might look like uh, in Content Studio. So in this case, there's the validation failed for the zip file. And uh, this is all customizable. So you can give your own feedbacks uh, and uh, even use uh, content localization, sorry, localization. So, so it would be correct in, in English or Norwegian or whatever. Um, so uh, that's it for content validators. Um, other things in XP um, you might notice is that we have now removed uh, the uh, good old REST APIs that have existed in the core since day one, and they have now been moved into their respective applications. So for instance, Content Studio is now fully standalone which uh, means that uh, it's faster for us to do new releases. We don't have to push a new version of XP if there are some, let's say, Content Studio backend things that need to be changed, unless they are kind of very low level in, in XP. Uh, so you might notice that if you have at some point been using these REST APIs, they will no longer be there and they have never been documented uh, for that sake. So uh, consider that when upgrading to 7.8. Um, yeah, there's also an archive and restore function now in the Content API. Move events. I've previously just thrown an event for the item that you move and not for the child items. 
now every item has an event and this will make it easier for everyone to detect that change. Um, yeah, also image sizes. I know a few of you have been waiting for this and it's been available in guillotine for a while. You can now pass in the image sizes you want in the process HTML function and it will generate the uh, image source set. So it can optimize basically performance for mobile, desktop, etc. And this applies to the HTML area, uh, rich text editor, right? Yeah, there's some um, infosec things there, like memory constraints for image service. It used to be like unconstrained and could, in some cases, uh, crash a server uh, for some very specific usages. Now this is uh, constrained and configurable. Also, the uh, Docker images are now multi-architecture, uh, which enables it to run on, for instance, the ARM. Uh, the new Max, etc., and uh, no less than sixty other improvements. Contest Studio Four. Skipping ahead, um, I'll just give a demo of that. So, what do we have here? So, yeah, this is the first page you see. Going to log in, and we have Contest Studio version four. So, why is it called version four? Well, it's basically because the change we made with um, with XP uh, by removing the REST API out and into Content Studio application. So uh, that's kind of the main thing. Uh, it's not like a very visual thing. There is, however, one visual thing. This bar is now going to be open most of the time uh, before it was kind of hidden. And uh, the essential reason is this, that you have now a new button here, archive. So you can see moving between the uh, the browse uh, the content view to the archive. So uh, we also updated the headless movie database with some more sample content like this one. Uh, here we have a, a uh, article with some pictures. So if I select this one and maybe I select uh, not all the persons, but maybe yeah, Daniel Craig and uh, Leah Sadu. Um, and then uh, I can click archive. So what you'll notice is that delete has been deleted and replaced with archive. Uh, this is, sorry, it's in Norwegian apparently. I, I did some testing here, but it says archive here. And uh, now it basically says, um, there's one more interesting improvement. Uh, this applies to both the archive and delete and unpublished dialogue. So there's some, Something saying in, inbound dependencies, one of or more of your items are referenced. So it used to be very, let's say, superficial, but now you can see it for every item. So you can see, okay, who's who's referencing Leah here, right? And you can go in and fix it. So, oh, okay, it's the, this, this uh, article and this, um, this movie, actually. So, um, so you can see how that's useful and same here with the dependencies. But let's just archive it, nine items, same as you've seen before, similar to delete. The big difference is of course that with delete, this was lost forever kind of, you have to do a restore or something or import it again from some other source. Uh, now you can go over to archive and we can see the items here so I can, I can select that one. Uh, you can select here are the images, right? And you also have some very limited functionality here. You have the details panel and the version history. And um, interestingly enough, you can see that this was marked as ready and then just archived and restart and then archived again. So you can see I've been playing around with it. Uh, maybe also interesting, let's try to go here and publish everything. Publish. Oh yeah, in progress. Exclude. Publish now. Okay, there we are. So everything is live. Let's try to archive something else like the Kokskis and Brad Pitt here. Huh? Archive. Four elements. Going to the archive, you can see I, I'm sort of increasingly have new stuff here. And looking at Brad Pitt, you can see from the history, it was marked as ready, published, then unpublished and archived. So 
when I archive it first, unpublishes it, and then archives it. So you get this full revision control of what's happened with this item uh, and when it was live and when it was not live, etc. So this is very useful in terms of uh, being able to audit your, your, your information. And um, also this says preview not available and we're working on a generic preview. So any item will be able to preview even if it doesn't have a rendering. So that's going to be useful also for headless modes in the future. So, um, so that will also help us doing a nicer diff between, between versions of an item. All right. So of course you might wonder now what I've archived stuff. If I select, okay, maybe I can select everything. Restore. Restore 13 items. Confirm. Of course. So it's still a beta. But let's see what, what, what happened there. Um, we can see that we now got this stuff restored. So Leah got back here. Daniel got back here. The articles have been returned. You can see they're saying moved as the, the state here. But uh, the thing is that the archive restore feature will try to restore stuff back into where it originally came from, if it's possible. If not, it will place it on the root. So in this case, you can see the it knew the articles folder was there, so it's gonna just restart it back into that one. So uh, and of course, then you can uh, publish stuff again, right? And we're back online with the with the items. It didn't lose them. All right, uh, I think that's it for the uh, for the archive restore. Other improvements, yeah. The lit dialog mentioned it. Um, Improvements, some UI improvements to the selector dropdowns. It's going to show you more than four items now. So it's going to be easier to select things. The image component has been deprecated, which means that when you're working with the page builder, it's not going to show unless you turn on a flag. Um, and of course, if you have used it, it's still going to work. Um, also, you can turn off content tra path transliteration. This is when you're going to type in some, some funky name in the display name field, it's going to generate the uh, URL path, um, and today it's automatically trying to, to make it look nice with English characters. So if you disable this now, it's going gonna, it's gonna to show the, um, yeah, it's going to be simpler though. Um, spell checking, yeah, this is basically so that uh, spell checkers will work more, play more nicely with text line and text area, and then there's 50 more bug fixes and improvements. There's also a new thing coming. Um, you might have seen it on the forum. So we now have, um, have a very near a release of some, uh, some new, a small new app, which is the content type manager. So this is a pure developer tool and, um, you can, you can run it and then you can load a content type, select the file. And I'm going to just select the article that I just had here, open. And here you can now uh, visually manage the content type, right? So you can uh, you can configure it here. You can see these are field sets, uh, so tags here, and then it has two inputs: tag and spotlight. Spotlight is a content selector. You could add the loud content types, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Uh, and uh, tags, what's that? Well, it's a tag input. So uh, here you can set the help text, and there's even internationalization things going on there. So, so it means you can more easily uh, manage and create content types than having to play around with the XML. So this will actually open this from file and save it back to the file in your project. So this is all in all, this is like a very, very nice start for a, a future uh, kind of developer studio, I guess, that will handle even more things than content types. Right. This is uh, this uh, also new new feature. Okay, moving back to slides again. Final time. All of this uh, is to be released before Christmas, and same applies to the next JS integration. Uh, so expect that before Christmas, and uh, the next JS will also be 
uh, requiring XP7.8 as far as I know. There are some small improvements that we made to basically simplify uh, simplify some details in the implementation. So um, what's next? In on the cloud, uh, as you know, it's been live for a while and uh, we've been in incrementally adding new features and improving the cloud. So uh, for instance, uh, you can sign up right now, get 10 days for free if you haven't done it. Give it a go. Um, and um, uh, one of the things we're kind of proud of is how we're working to get the staging between code and testing and QA going in in uh, in the cloud uh, platform, so to say. So uh, here you can see how I created the production environment and the QA and the test environment, and they're all kind of linked together. So as we move forward, this will be more and more integrated with everything in the cloud. So you, you, you'll have a simpler life altogether to manage stage, uh, test and deploy uh, new functionality um, basically. So uh, spinning up a new environment is just clicking create here now and choosing the, the parent environment if you have one and then go. And it's gonna spin up in a minute or two. So it's, it's really, really coming together and uh, we'll be We'll be releasing a new version that's going to support regions. Like if you want to run it in the US region, uh, you'll be able to do that really soon. So just uh, keep keep watching and uh, you'll see uh, things coming along very, very nicely. Explorer, uh, for those of you that haven't sort of seen this, uh, we have been working for a long time on a kind of a search platform. And uh, we've had the version one live for a while. Uh, it's been it's been working, obviously, but it's been uh, kind of limited. And uh, we've been working to make it more user friendly, simpler, and not to mention have a GraphQL APIs for just about everything. Um, also, there's there's an, a REST API to ingest now, so you don't have to write your own collector apps, as we call them. So you can you can do this in two ways now. You can just send data into explorer or from from an api via an api or you can write your own xp apps that will go out to fetch the data and, and put them into explorer so lots of new cool stuff coming here uh, we are, we're looking forward to demoing this also content studio we're working hard to to add sort of the features people are looking for um, on top of our list now is workflow and collaboration uh, improved public schedule publishing so we can also publish or schedule um, changed items. Uh, and uh, then uh, custom input types been on the, uh, on the backlog for a while. Now it's starting to uh, grow nearer and then rich text editor improvements, uh, moving to a more like a block editor visual uh, approach for that one. So, um, so it's gonna be just better better experience for everyone. Also, finally, the XP core. What are we working on? Uh, um, next up is grid. So you'll be seeing uh, grid memory capabilities, means you can, you can store state across the entire cluster and use that to speed up or to enable fancy functionality that would be possible without grid. So of course, we are gonna use that ourselves uh, in, in the content studio to to do some cool stuff. Um, Graal, for everyone that's not aware of what that is, it's uh, it's uh, the next generation JavaScript engine, uh, so to say, uh, but it's also more. There's the Graal JS, which is the JavaScript engine, and then there's the Graal VM, which is essentially the Java VM compiled via a Java compiler. So it's normally been C or C++, but now, now it's compiled with Java. So it, it's like the next generation of uh, VM. Uh, and just to, uh, just to brag, <laughs> we now have a, we have a working and running version uh, using the Graal.js and the Graal VM. So this looks promising for the future. And this is obviously an XP8 uh, feature when, when that's gonna be ready. Also permissions are uh, on top of the line. So we're gonna do some, some improvements and simplifications and add more flexibility 
with uh, an even easier way of using things in terms of permissions. So that's it for me. Um, let's see if you have any questions. There's one um, question. Well, that's you... archive. Yeah, yeah, this is a good question. Mm. So one might imagine <clears throat> that the archive restore was a simple feature to implement. Uh, it was not. <laughs> it had, mm. We had to do a lot of changes uh, on low level uh, in our API. And there's also things like Egil here is asking about how does archive restore work across layers? If the content is archived on a child layer, will the ob uh, content object automatically reappear from the parent layer? So Egil, this is going to work the way you want it to. <laughs> so if you, um, if you uh, archive an item in a child layer, that's going to stay archived there, right? Because because it's the same item, it's just moved to the archive. And um, uh, that means you can, of course, reintroduce it. But there's also more because if you archive an item, what happens to the child layers of that again? So there we're going to do the same that we've done for delete previously. So if it's possible safely, we're going to archive it. If not, it's going to remain uh, unarchived in the child layer. So I hope that's an answer to the question. It's gonna it's gonna work uh, in a safe way and uh, the way we expect it. So this enables people with multiple layers to remove items, basically, that they're not interested in having. Mm -hmm. um, but if you delete the item, then it's gonna reappear. Okay. Yeah, thank you, Thomas. Uh, so this wraps up our agenda for today. Uh, thanks to both Espen and Thomas for great presentations. And uh, we will share the videos of the sessions in our YouTube channel and um, publish the links in our Slack workspace. So don't worry if you have missed something, you will be able to, to catch up later. And uh, of course, uh, stay, stay um, tuned for our new releases as we are um, constantly working on uh, improving the, the products we are building. Yeah, so thank you for joining us uh, today. Take care, stay healthy, and uh, we hope to see you soon in our uh, developer webinars next year. Yeah, Great job, everyone. Joining everyone. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas.